Today's video is all about the overcasting foot. On this particular machine, the Brothers SQ9185, you actually get two overcasting feet. I'm gonna show you how to use them. I'm gonna show you why you should use them. I'm gonna show you what they look like. Let's get started. Okay, I chose two different materials today uh, to show how the overcasting can work on a thin piece of fabric and a thick piece of fabric. The thick piece of fabric is uh, duck canvas from Joann's and this thin piece of fabric is just um, some cotton quarter. I'm going to use this yellow thread for the top and then the bobbin I'm um, using black so we'll get to see the contrasting colors in the fabric. So let me go ahead and cut these up. Let's get to it. Okay, as usual, anytime I'm cutting fabric, I like to use my cutting board. I like to use my rotary cutter and my straight ruler. I keep my hand right here and I just hold down firm, make a straight cut. As soon as I get done cutting, I always retract the blade. So I'll go ahead and cut the duck canvas and then we'll be started. Okay, right here, these are both of your overcasting feet. This is G and this is J. J is your do everything foot. It does straight stitch, zigzag, and it also does overcasting. G is your dedicated overcasting foot. So we're gonna start out with G first. This is how you load it up. Okay. Once you load it up, now it's time to thread the sewing machine. I'm starting out with a brand new um, spool. So you just want to simply open that, put your spool on, put your cap on. Okay, once your thread is on, you take it and you have your thread come in that little groove right there. Then you go through this little V-shaped tensioner then you simply follow it all the way down and you can see where it says three and then you come up and you make sure you get your thread in that loop in there and you come on down and then you thread it right in here Okay, once I have the thread threaded, I like to always put it into the whatever foot I'm using, just so the thread is out of my way. So I'll go ahead and push that back. This is how you load your bobbin. The bobbin is under this clear cover. There's your bobbin. So, with this particular machine, you just wanna make sure that the bobbin thread is coming off of the bobbin in a counterclockwise you put it on and then you just follow you just follow this little pattern right here goes in there on around and then it has an, a little uh, a little blade right here to cut off the excess thread and then you simply put the cover back on and now you're ready to turn the machine on Okay, right here we're looking at the operation manual. This is on page 81, and it shows you using your G foot on thin or medium weighted fabric, you use number six. So let's use number six. Okay, now in order to change number six, you just go one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you see, it says G, number six, and the length and zigzag is already preset. 
So this is what number six looks like. So we're going to load our fabric and let's start sewing. Okay, now we're gonna start out with the thin fabric. So you just simply place the fabric down and you line your fabric right here to the edge of the overcasting foot next to this guy. Right here next to the guy. Okay, once your fabric is loaded, now you're ready to sew. I simply have mine on the medium speed and I'm using the foot control. So this is what it looks like. Okay, once you get done, needle up. Let's take the fabric out, take a look at it. Okay, now let's take a look at it. Okay, here's the decorative overcasting stitch. This is what it looks like. So, let's work on the thick duck canvas and then compare the two. Okay, switching over to a thicker duck canvas, same thing. You line up your material to the guy pin. I'm going to switch this one to number seven since it's thicker material. And uh, let's see what this one looks like. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I actually have two of them here. Let's, uh, this is gonna simulate sewing jeans together. I'm gonna put this one on high just to hurry up and get it done. Okay, done, needle up, let's take a look. Okay, let's go compare the two. Okay, here's the overcasting on the thin fabric. Here's the overcasting on the thick fabric. As you see, the thick fabric is just the, um, the, the thread just looks to be a little longer, a little wider. And like I said, since this was simulating some jeans, if you were to open it up, you can see there's your uh, your little hem, a little seam. Okay, this was the G foot. Now let's switch over to the J foot and see how the overcasting looks on that foot. Okay, now I'm about to switch over to the J foot to do some overcasting on the duck canvas. The J foot is primarily for thick or stretchy material. So I'm just gonna do the overcasting on the duck canvas. Let me show you how you uh, swap feet out on the sewing machine. Okay, in order to change presser feet out, you simply depress this little black lever and the presser foot drops. Get it out your way. Take your new presser foot and you line it up and you lower your presser foot level. Lever, I'm sorry. It clamps into place and you pick it on up and then again, I just like to put my thread through the presser foot, and it's simple as that. Okay, now that we just switched the presser foot to J, J does its overcasting on number eight and number nine. So we simply just go up one, go to eight, lower the fabric, now let's start sewing. Okay, since we're using the J foot and it doesn't have a guide, what I do, this opening right here, I line the fabric up right at the edge of this opening, okay? Look at our work. And 
this is what eight looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and put nine and then we'll compare the two. Okay, this is what Presser Foot J just did. This is uh, number eight. This is number nine. Number nine just seems to be a little longer, but they both look nice. And this is what you can uh, expect it to look like. So let me show you all of them together and we'll compare. Okay, here's all four of them together. This is number six. This is number seven. This is number eight. This is number nine. These two were presser foot G. Six and seven is G and eight and nine is J. As you can see, all four of them do look nice. Uh, just, it's your personal preference. Uh, if you are using a thicker uh, material, then you might want to go with J, uh, eight or nine, but this is what it would look like. Okay, here's four articles of clothing, all flipped inside out to have an overcasting stitch. This is the inside uh, seam of a shirt. Here's your overcasting stitch. On that same shirt at the bottom, the bottom hem, here's your overcasting stitch. Here are a pair of jeans with an uh, overcasting stitch. This is the inside of a hoodie with an overcasting stitch. And here is uh, another jacket with an overcasting stitch. So you can see on a lot of different articles of clothing that you wear, the overcasting stitch gives a professional look. And that's why it's used. Plus, it keeps the material from fraying. Now your overcasting foot will not replace your surge machine. But if you don't have a surge machine, this is a good alternative. Now that you are an overcasting pro, <laughs> get your sewing machines out and start practicing. As usual, I appreciate you for watching. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll be sure to answer. You guys have a good one.